Harry Kane hits back at some of the recent criticism hitting the England squad. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Yes, today's video is going to centre around Harry Kane, who has come, come out firing in an interview he has done in regards to recent criticism of the England squad from fans, from pundits, from ex-players, ex-legends, whatever you want to call it. Harry Kane is simply not happy at the criticism of the England squad, and I imagine a lot of the England squad are probably not happy about it. The sad reality is, I think it's warranted. We're going to be talking about the Euros, we're going to be talking about England, we're going to be talking about the comments from certain uh, pundits and individuals, and obviously we're going to be talking about Harry Kane's comments back at himself. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both films are always and be greatly appreciated. Get involved in the comment section, let me know your thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, feelings. Whatever you want to call it in regards to this topic of conversation, I'm sure it'll make for great and interesting reading down below. Please use and abuse that comment section, people. Would love to hear from you all on this topic. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. Let's talk Harry Kane's criticism of the England squad, the criticism overall, and everything else in between. Safe to say, England's Euros has been pretty underwhelming. In a tournament that I think has been brilliant, I think I, I I think I've really enjoyed this tournament. In all honesty, like there's been a couple of shocks, there's been some great performances, there's been some great football, there's been some absolutely stupendous goals that have been scored. Um, there's been some incredible youth prospects that have really risen to the occasion. We get to see the old mixed with the new, mixed with the the, the 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 ones in their prime. I think it's been a beautifully blended tournament overall. And I think it's been really well done. I think VAR to a minimum has been um, somewhat um, uh, an, an element of the story, a bit of a side dish, if you like, rather than overshadowing the tournament. With like I say, the exception of one or two incidences, I've really enjoyed this tournament. But the one element I've not enjoyed about is supposedly my home nation of England. Like, I have been a massive critical um, fan of Gareth Southgate in England for the past several years. I've constantly called for him to go. But I guess on some level, I am still somewhat of an England fan. I don't really care for them, but I guess by basically being born in this country, I am somewhat of an England fan. I don't necessarily care for international football other than major tournaments. I've lost my dis. I've had disinterest in England for a number of years now, um, but at the same time, it's still England. It's still a major tournament. It's still major international football, and this is why I've lost interest. Because although I anticipated England to be underwhelming so far in the Euros, they have still managed to defy my expectations and be even more underwhelming than I thought they would be. It's strange to say that when obviously England are going into the final group stage game tomorrow night against um, uh, Slovenia, of course, with four points from their opening two games. A lot of teams would snap your hand off at that, but England having the squad that they have and of course being the favourites for the tournament should be winning by more. They should have had six points out of six. They should be playing better football than what they are right now. And that all stems from the manager. All stems from the manager. This tournament so far has been very underwhelming from an England fan's point of view. In terms of, we scraped past, uh, we, we scraped past Serbia. We get a 1-1 draw against Denmark in which, in all honesty, if Denmark had a bit more quality in the final third and a bit more composure in the final third... They could have beaten us and probably should have beaten us. And then tomorrow night we're going into a game against Slovenia in which we should be winning. We should be getting seven points from this group. We should be topping it and we should be going into the quarter uh, round of 16 stage with a hopefully relatively favourable draw. But we have not really, we've not really got much confidence in this setup of England, unless things change drastically. And again, it all stems from the manager. This week, after the, uh, well, last week, should I say now, um, after the Denmark England game, a lot of fans 
a lot of pundits, a lot of legends were all critical of England's performances. They were left scratching their heads over the tactical decision-making of Gareth Southgate. They were left frustrated in the way that England had set up. They were left annoyed and angry at the fact that England yet again go 1-0 up and then drop so deep that they invite the pressure on and eventually they concede a goal. Grinding out a 1-0 win with only 20 minutes gone was never going to work. Or it was never going to work consistently. You may be able to get away with it against the Serbia, say. But not against Denmark. Whatever. Various comments have been made this week. I've had my say. I'm sure you lot have had your say. Ex-players. Legends of the game have had their say. And they're just as confused as I am. As you are. As everybody else is. Over the way that England have set up. Over the way that England are playing. And it is really weird and frustrating. Two players in particular, or two ex-players in particular, should I say, that I've had their say are Gary Lineker and Alan Shearer. They had some harsh words to say about England's performances. They had some harsh words to say about Harry Kane in particular. And it's led to Harry Kane responding. Now, here's what I'll say about these two players. They... Missed the boat on this a long time ago. A lot of fans, myself included on that, have been calling out Gareth Southgate's tactics for years. We've been calling out Gareth Southgate's uh, lack of awareness, lack of knowledge and lack of learning from his own mistakes in previous years. For years. And finally, these two are catching up. It was met with some strong language by the two of them. It was met by a more relaxed environment of their own podcast in which they were able to voice their opinions on the England squad with. Kind of blurs the line a little bit between their professionalism when they're on the BBC and obviously their professionalism off the BBC when they're doing their own thing and their own podcast and stuff. But, you know, that's by the by. Like, that's cool, whatever. It's... Just very strange to me that they're only catching up now. Where was this kind of awareness? Where was this kind of opinion and knowledge of the past several years? Whether it be from the moment that I gave up with Gareth Southgate after Croatia to obviously a few years later in the Euros at Wembley losing to Italy on penalties in the Euro 2020-2021 final. Where was it a, a year later in Qatar for the 2022 World Cup? Now it's just starting to hit. Now it's just starting to sink in. Strange to me. And Harry Kane's criticism of their criticism, his response to their criticism, he clearly has not been paying attention to the large majority of what the fans are saying. Because although Shearer and Lineker... And maybe, maybe a sum of the nation, I'm not going to say everybody, but maybe some of the nation, some ex-players and whatever, have been critical of player performances and calling out certain individuals. The main bulk of it all falls on the manager. The main blame here falls on the manager. It's not the players, it's the manager's setup. And it just seems that Kane coming out and saying what he has said in his interview, and I've got some quotes here that I'll read in a second, just seems to be, you're the England captain, you're the golden boy, you're, you know, you're the, you're the poster boy, you're this, you're that. Can you just go out there and just say that we're all in this together and we all need the support and we all need... No. In my lifetime, we've had this in abundance as an England fan. We have had teams that on paper look unbelievable. And they've failed. And they let us down constantly. And they underperform. And they underwhelm. And they don't excite. And they don't do anything to get you off of your seat. And, and anticipate something special happening in major tournaments. Even though we've had the squad to do that. They've never delivered. They've never ever delivered. And here we are once again in another tournament where they're not delivering 
They're not exciting us. And it's down to the tactics. We've had this in my entire lifetime of us going into major tournaments with expectations and England constantly failing to meet those expectations. Criticism is warranted. As long as it's not on, as long as it doesn't cross the line of abuse, it is warranted. Criticism is warranted. Don't come out looking for sympathy. Don't come out with your violins. Don't come out with your YouTube apologies and your whole sort of um, sad music in the background. Just own it. Just own you're not playing well. Just come out and say, we're not playing well. We're looking at ways to fix it. It may get boring. It may get repetitive. But to sit there and cry about, where, 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 we need the full support of the nation. We need this. We need that. We need your sympathy. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And it's something that we have heard time and time again down the years. Here are some of the quotes that Kane has said. What ex players have to realise is, is that it is very hard not to listen to it now, especially for some players who are not used to being, uh, you not used, not used to it, who are new to the environment. Your professional footballers, your media trained, you should re relatively know what is probably coming. And like I say, as long as it's not abuse and it's criticism, criticism is fair and warranted. As long as there is obviously justification to back it up. I know they have got to be honest and give their opinion. But they also have a responsibility as an ex-England player. That a lot of players looked up to. People do care about what they say. And people do listen to them. Goes with the territory of being a legend. Yeah. Everyone has got their own opinion. But the bottom line is. We have not won anything of the... Uh, not won anything as a nation for a long, 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 long time. And a lot of these players were part of that as well. So they know how tough it is. It is not digging anyone out. It is just the reality that they know that it is tough to play in these major tournaments and tough to play for England. I would never disrespect any player. All I would say is that I remember, it is remember what it's like to wear the shirt and that their words are listened to. You do hear it. We all want to win a major tournament being as helpful as they can and building the lads up with confidence would be a much better way of going about it. I get some of what he's saying to an, to an extent. The English media in particular is horrible and disgusting for building people up only to cut them down when they're at their worst. But it's criticism at the end of the day and it is warranted if it's justified and right now it is justified. And a lot of it isn't on the players. No one is really blaming the players. You'll get a few here and there that are critical of the players' performances. And I have been one of them as well. I don't get why Harry Kane is dropping so deep. I don't get why Phil Foden is meant to be playing left wing but is coming so narrow. I don't get why, you know, John Stones is... Uh, ha has not been uh, at his best this tournament. I don't get certain aspects of this England team. But guess what? A large part of that, other than the fact that you are fantastic individual players, is down to the manager's tactics. Because we know you're brilliant players individually. We know we have got a star-studded team of individuals. Any chance commentators get to go, well, we've got the player of the Premier League, uh, Premier League season in our ranks. We've got the, the La Liga player of the year. We've got this player of the year. We've got Harry Kane, who's top goal scorer in the Bundesliga. We've got a, a generational talent in Trent Alexander-Arnold. We've got Declan Rice, arguably one of the best defensive midfielders on the planet right now. We've got this guy. We've got that guy. We've got probably one of the best defenders in the world in John Stones. We've got one of the best wingers and young talents in Bukayo Saka. Whatever it may be. Every chance we get, commentators say that. We know the individual talent there is there. We know the individual quality is there. We know on paper we should be finding a way to win this tournament. And any future tournament for at least the next 8 to 12 years. But it's the manager. 
and it is constantly the manager. And that's why I go back to my earlier point of Harry Kane's the captain and he's been told to go out there and basically not throw anyone under the bus, especially not Gareth Southgate. Try and protect Ga Southgate to, to the best of your ability. I think he even does allude somewhere, maybe not in this specific interview, but maybe somewhere else, that he chose to drop deep. He chooses to come deep. Not that deep where you're playing le literally at left back or centre back, mate. Surely not. Surely that's not on you. I find it hard to believe that that is a decision that you have made to drop that deep. You might as well be back in Tottenham. It's 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 mind boggling to me. And like I say, I just I don't get the whole. I need uh, we need sympathy factor. We need encouragement factor. No. Criticism is warranted when it is justified and you should know that more than anyone that right now it is completely Justified if it crosses the line into abuse. We will call it out. We'll say that's not on it's wrong whatever but The criticism that you're facing right now is in my opinion warranted and The part of this is and I get like it's we look out for each other. We're a unit. We're one. We're not a bunch of individuals It's not on you specifically There are elements of everyone's game right now where it's a mistake But it's mainly on the south uh, on Southgate. It's mainly on the manager Square pegs and round holes constantly Foden is not a left winger Trent Alexander-Arnold is not a central midfielder Trippier is not a left back. Eze, he brought on and played on left wing the other night. He's not a left winger either. There's just square pegs, round holes, and it's really dysfunctional of the team. And to go to a major tournament in which you are um, experimenting, it's, it's completely ridiculous. No other manager would do that. No other manager would go to a major tournament and experiment with these kinds of things. It's ridiculous. And and just now, I've just got to put this out as well, because this is breaking news. David Ornstein has just put that Conor Gallagher is set to start in England's final Euro 2024 group game against Slovenia. Chelsea midfielder expected to replace Trent Alexander-Arnold at Gareth Southgate continues trend of tweaking England team for game three of major tournaments. So, is that Gareth Southgate admitting that he was wrong to play Southgate uh, to play Trent in midfield to replace him with Connor Gallagher, not Kobe Mainu or Adam Wharton, who I think are different type of players that would complement Declan Rice very very well, but Connor freaking Gallagher, the absolute Duracell bunny that is Connor Gallagher. I I I I, I don't get it. And this is why the criticism keeps on coming. And this, from Harry Kane, I don't think has helped the situation. I think it's only made it worse. All I'm saying is, you best put in a better performance tomorrow. You best win the game in a comfortable style tomorrow. Sail straight through to the knockout stages. Otherwise, there's more criticism that's going to come your way. And you're going to be having to do more whining and complaining in interviews. And begging for the nation's sympathy. That's all I'll say. Because unless things change, we're not winning this tournament. And to say that we're one of the favourites, to say that we've got an absolute unbelievable squad on paper, full of talent and quality, it's all going to fall on the manager's shoulders. And it's not on the players necessarily. But there you have it. Those are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you call it. This guy, I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of the criticism that is, that is facing the England side right now? What do you make of Harry Kane's comments towards not just Gary Lineker and Alan Shearer, but of course the nation as well? When you're really deep, it, it does go beyond them to ex-players in particular. I want to know what you guys think and feel on this. Your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it on this particular topic. Might be great and interesting reading, I'm sure, down below in the comment section. Use and abuse that comment section, people. I'm sure they'll make for great and interesting reading. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way out. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new. I want to see some content like this. Both things are always and forever greatly appreciated. Get him, uh, and, and also, thanks everyone for watching and listening. I've been Fletch. This has been another Fletch Talks video, and I will see you speak to you all again soon in another video or live stream or whatever it may be. Cheers, guys. Thanks everyone for watching. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your day. Speak to you all again very, very soon.